Welcome to another episode at Tunes at the Tom Pound. Oren Moore translates from Scots Gaelic as the great melody. The name comes from a creation myth where the Celts believed that something as simple as a song brought the world into being. Legend has it, it can still be heard today. They enjoy making music and aspire to contribute uh, some hum harmonic accompaniment to the illustrious tale. The band or more is Tom Cochran, Karen Mills Cochran, Jonathan Satz, and Bobby Campbell. The, they showcase traditional Scottish and Irish music along with modern Celtic Americana and original songs that transport listeners to distant shores and earlier times while telling tales of exotic cultures and, beginning, and beguiling journeys. Thank you guys for coming again. It's great to be here. Having us. Yes, yes here. absolutely. I'm so excited you guys are here. You guys sound great in here. We were warming up, and it sounds freaking great in here. So okay. thank you for being thank here. You. Well, tell me uh, about the inspiration that. Uh, tell me about the inspiration to start on more. Well, um, Karen and I got together, and Karen's been playing music for years and years, and uh, I, I'm a big music aficionado, and. Um, a lot of different influences from mm -hmm. uh, gospel and country to good uh, 60s rock and roll, yeah. Grateful Dead, yep. uh, and, you know, all these coming in and uh, getting hints of uh, Celtic coming into it. Nice. And nice. Um, when I decided to sort of trace my roots, I got into s looking into my Scottish roots and culture okay. and then started picking up on these uh, Celtic artists. Really? And, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, Doogie McLean, uh, Caper Cayley, uh, Celtic rock band, Rune Rig, uh, the Elders, and, and going to Scottish festivals, hearing these musicians live and going, wow, this is incredible stuff. Mm, yeah. And so just tried to... Uh, bring that feeling into our playing and we started playing with uh, some friends of Karen's over in Paonia and okay. incorporating a few of our songs into their songs which have had a lot of uh, folk and blues and uh, jazz influence and um, from there we took off my son uh, started playing percussion with yep. us at first and Brandon is that his Brandon, name? Yep. Yeah. Brandon and okay. he took off he decided he needed to go to grad school so sure, uh, sure. Uh, we had Jonathan come in and Bobby come in and it's okay. uh, it's been a wonderful blend and it, but it just sort of developed out of uh, our love for all kinds of music sure yeah. awesome awesome so when did your uh, love for Celtic music start well, it's always been there. I, I can remember my dad taking us to hear a uh, Scottish pipe band when I was like about seven or eight years old. Wow. And as okay. soon as the pipe started, I was going, wow, right? that's yeah. amazing. I love that, you know. And so it, it's, been a, it's been a long journey. But it, like I said, it's probably only about uh, 20 years ago when I really started okay. to get into the whole Celtic music world and uh, sort of have that uh, as a strong influence on what I'm doing. Right, yeah. yeah. I bet that was a, a big, broad learning curve at the beginning, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I still like, I, I feel like I'm still learning. There, there's sure. things about Celtic music that I go, oh, boy, I, I need to, you know, really work on that aspect of it. So Awesome, yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. So did you bring Karen in the middle of all this at the same time? What, well, what is she, your... she, she sort of dragged me into the music world. I, okay. Uh, I, my, my background is a lot of theater, yep. and uh, so I was... Uh, theater professor and director for many years, an actor, and uh, when we got met Karen, she sort of gone, hey, you, you can play the guitar, you can, you, let's do this, and so she dragged me uh, sort of Arr! into Kicking it. Kicking and, and screaming, <laughs> huh? Yeah, okay. and, uh, and so yeah, I think she needs to talk about, um, you know, how that developed out of that. How did that transpire, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> Was he, was he in pain at first? <laughs> yeah, well, he was, because <laughs> I was singing with a group over in Paonia, and uh, uh, it was another couple. Actually, there were two other couples involved, and we started dating, and I said, well, if you want to date me, you have to be in my band. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, okay, and then he felt 
intimidated because these people like had been really good musicians playing and yeah. playing and playing for years and years and years and he had been playing but not like that you know mm -hmm. sure. and uh, so we started doing that got into harmonies got into all sorts of really neat things and then over time our interest in uh, Celtic music kind of differentiated us from the direction those guys wanted okay, to go. Sure. So that's when we uh, veered off and, and brought in Brendan and Jonathan and Bobby and awesome. started doing Orin and Moore. So uh, you guys are all founding members essentially, is that correct? No, you, you guys started it and then you guys came in after, yeah. okay, great. Yeah, w uh, Brendan, uh, the w sometimes they, those guys were playing as a duo, then okay. they brought Brendan in and played as a trio, then yeah. they brought me in, then they brought Bobby in, and for a while there were five of us. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, awesome. Then, and then we lost uh, Brendan. But yeah. we still play in that configuration. Sometimes they're playing as a duo, sometimes these guys are playing as a trio, and mm -hmm. sometimes we do yeah. the whole... Sometimes we do a trio kitten. with you. Yeah, sometimes. <coughs> yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. So, Bobby, when did you start with this group? You have a big musical career outside of this, too, prior to this. When did you start with these guys? Maybe four years ago. Okay. Or yeah. I lose track after I've been a number of years. And, yeah. and uh, kind of an interesting, like, sidebar, um, Karen and I have known each other for, I don't know, 40 years, something oh, like okay. that. Cool. We both lived in Paonia for a while. I see, yep. And, Small um, town. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but we also played a, a group uh, that Karen had called Rosewood, and yeah. I, I played with them for a bit here and there. Okay, okay. Uh, so we have that musical connection in, in, in the past. Gotcha. Then um, uh, another unrelated sidebar, though, with it, we had a big fire over there uh, the same year of the Storm King fire here. Okay. And um, both of the houses that we were living in right across the gulch from each other burned in that fire so actually one of karen's original wow. songs is is kind of dedicated to that wow, that time okay. so that was wow. another kind of interesting thing but so we've known each other for a long time and then tom used to be my next door neighbor in glenwood oh, okay. Uh, okay before you know any music had any right. uh, role in our relationship right. we just waved each other over the fence and yeah. i used to hire brendan when he was a little kid to come over and mow the lawn <laughs> so, did he do a good job yeah and jonathan i've known for a long long time just through uh, connections with uh, his work at cmc but also okay. Uh, we're, we are avid kayakers, and we've done a bunch of kayaking together. Awesome. So yep. we have these all these connections outside outside of the band. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So you guys have been together as a four piece. Well, I guess a five piece with Brendan for the last four four years. Is that yeah. correct? Something four like five, that. Yeah. Four or five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's let's hear a couple tunes. What do you say about that? Sounds good. Awesome. One, two, one, two. <laughs>
fiddle, come sell your fiddle so fine. Will you come sell your fiddle and buy a pint of wine? Oh, if I should sell my fiddle, the world would think I'm mad. Many's a random day, my fiddle and I have. The last song we did was... <laughs> The last song we did was called Rattle and Roar and Willie, and it was written back in the 1700s. Uh, we do it a little faster and a little uh, more uh, rock beat than they did it then, but uh, it is an old tune. Yeah. Uh, the next one, I think, uh, Jonathan should talk about. All right. Well, this is a song from uh, one of our favorite groups, um, which is a, a group called Katzenjammer, which is a, a group from Norway, or as Bobby likes to say, from Norwegia. <laughs> Um, and they're just a great bunch of multi-instrumentalists, uh, four women who, um, they just switch around on stages. They have 20 instruments on stage. They're, they're really fantastic. Unfortunately, no longer together, but they produced a bunch of really great music. But this song's a great example about how we um, Celticize uh, songs that aren't necessarily Celtic. And by that, um, one of I th what I think is our I iconic sound of this band is when Karen and Bobby um, play um, instruments together. I guess is this one you don't no, know, we but don't that this is. Later. But we do that a lot on other other songs mm -hmm. where these guys are playing um, their flute and and recorder in harmony. I think we do that in another one of their songs. But um, you guys should look up this band Katzenjammer because there's a lot of great video out there, and you need to hear them live. Because they're really spectacular. But they're no longer together. So. Unfortunately. But <laughs> there's a lot of good record out there. <laughs> All right. What's the song called, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting a second for the airplane. Okay. Uh, this song is called Rock, Paper, Scissors. Dun, 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 dun. One, two, three. You want everything you do, everything and anything is up to you. Every single day he starts with a riddle. You can go left or right down the middle. So take a little trip down the road and see what you're gonna find. Who you want to be, but you might have to pick between these three. Rock, paper, scissors, which one is? It's your decision. No matter what you choose, you're gonna live it. Scissors. Everybody wants to be happy, so take a look around, find a hand to hold. If you really want, you can change like the weather. No matter what you do, it'll keep getting better. Everything you want, that is who you are. You could be the sun or the moon or the stars or the bass or the drum or the lead guitar. Rock, paper, scissors, which one is? It's your decision. No matter what you choose, you're gonna live it. Rock, paper, scissors, which one is? It's your decision. And no matter what you choose, you're gonna live it. It's your decision, no matter what you choose, you're gonna live it. Rock, paper, scissors, which one is it? It's your decision, and no matter what you choose, you're gonna live it. Oh, rock, paper, scissors, which one is it? It's your decision, and no matter what you choose, you're gonna live it. No matter what you choose, you're gonna live it. 
what you choose, you're gonna live it. That was great, guys. You guys Thank sound you. awesome. That was really good. Rock, Paper, Scissors, that was a cool song, too. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Love yeah. that. I'll have to check out the, the original group, because that's the first time I've ever heard that. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. Awesome. So, uh, tell me about the instruments you guys use in Orrin Moore. Tom, you play, what do you play in the, in the group? I play uh, guitar, mainly, okay. mainly acoustic, but uh, we've been working on a little electric guitar lately on a couple of songs. Nice. But, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And then, Karen, what, you got a variety of things over I there. I do. I don't have them all out, but right, I play recorders, uh, tenor, alto, uh, and soprano recorders, and sometimes sopranino, and then I have a number of Irish whistles in different keys that yeah. I can play as well. And um, so different songs kind of require different tones. Okay, so you have, like those, they're kind of similar to a harmonica. You have a, a C. The, well, like this particular whistle. one is in the key of A, okay. and I can particularly play in A and in D major, yep. but there okay. are a number of sense. minor. Uh, you know, configurations I can do here, too. Okay. Yeah. okay. So, um, yeah, and so it's just kind of the voicing. It's down to yeah. what you want in the way of a voicing. Yeah. And, she's and, also the, and I also pianist. play guitar. Awesome, you know, yeah. awesome. That's yeah, a beautiful tailor there. Thank you. Yep, amazing. And then, Bobby, what do you got going on over there? You got all kinds of stuff happening. Yeah, well, so um, when I first started with the band, I was uh, primarily playing flute. And okay. I also play uh, soprano sax on some songs, okay. which is kind of an interesting cool. thing cool. to do with some Celtic versions of things. But um, when that was when Brendan was still with us and he was playing percussion. And when he okay. took off, it was like, well, we really need some percussion. Um, so uh, this is where I started playing the cajonan. I'm not a drummer, Clint. Dude, I, I'm, so, no, seriously, I'm impressed. You're well, holding it down, brother. I, I th at least today I'm playing one on TV. <laughs> but, uh, uh, it, was, it was, you know, sort of a new challenge in picking it, doing that up. And so part of that is uh, I have this foot pedal that's connected okay. to an electric, uh, like a drum brain mm -hmm. that has different settings on it, but you know, it has like tambourine sound, Excellent. which we use a lot yeah. as just a, a, almost like metronome helps us you know kind of keep us on on our tempo um but adding those things and sometimes i can play the tambourine and play the flute or the sax or something <laughs> at the cool. same time Heck yeah you know so uh that's challenging when especially when you're trying to take a solo or whatever but i have the flute the sax i have an irish flute also that okay I play on some things too cool. so. man totally holding it down yeah. totally holding it down good job well, it helps with having a great bass player. So what? It does what, yeah. you got a? Where where can we find one? <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks, Bobby. I was holding off on uh, giving you shit. <laughs> we uh, we have fun kidding each other a yep. lot. So. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, boy, kidding. boy, kidding. when we don't have Jonathan, we miss it. Oh gosh, so. yes. Yeah. He is he is the foundation of that yeah. for sure, man. It sounds really good. What kind of you playing a five string over there? Yeah, right? it's a five yeah. string. It's an Ibanez. Nice. Um, and uh, really enjoy playing. I am kind of came to playing bass late in, in my life. I'm, I'm also a guitar player, although yep. I haven't played awesome. guitar for years. At some point, I'm, I, just so I can say I'm a multi-instrumentalist, I want to <laughs> bring at least one song. I want to bring my guitar on stage. We'll figure that out at some point. Awesome, awesome. Heck yeah, man. Well, you're, holding, you're doing a great job over there, buddy. Sounds Thanks. awesome. He Sounds is good. a great bass player. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, tell me about your song selection. How do you guys choose songs? How does that How does that work? What's that process like? Well, we all, again, have a variety of musical taste, and we all sort of go, hey, how about this one? And yep, yep. bring it, listen to it, either play it or have a, a recorded version of it and go, yeah, that sounds cool. Well, I think we could do something with that. Or we go, hmm, doesn't, doesn't sure. move me, sure. you know? Right. So, it's it's a really consensus of all of us how we choose the music, but uh, you know I, I I'm I'm sort of the one that tries to bring in a lot of the Celtic stuff, and some of it works for us, and some of it frankly doesn't work as for the whole group. Sure, so, sure. Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, you know, uh, I, I think I think that uh, one of the things Bobby and I have done is to bring in some of those non-Celtic songs that that we're interested in but that we feel like would fit the character of our band or our sure, voices yeah. or something else um 
And at sometimes, I think Bobby mentioned this earlier, just at sometimes people out there when we're playing, they want to hear something familiar. Mm -hmm. And then they're willing mm -hmm. to give um, some of the other songs that they've never heard a, a, a better listen. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Well, so like you guys, like Rock, Paper, Scissors isn't an originally a Celtic tune. It's something yeah. like, I can't wait to hear what this song sounds like outside of this because yeah. it yeah. very much sounds Celtic. The way it you does. Played it, so. That's one of the reasons we decided, yeah, this is a good song yeah. to put into the record. But some of the songs too, I mean, um, we, we take liberties with, uh, well, like uh, who are artists from from uh, that part of the world, like Van okay. Morrison, right? Okay. We do a bunch sure. of, of his Van tunes, Morrison. right? Right, right. They're yep. not necessarily Celtic, although he does some amazing Celtic sounding Song. stuff. And he's Irish, mm -hmm. so that, yeah. that's the yeah, connection. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We get away with that. The other person who uh, we play a, a song or two from is uh, Mark Knopfler. Oh, I love Mark yeah. Knopfler. Yeah. Oh, and, and, yeah. um, so he was born in Edinburgh, so we can get oh, away yep. with that. Even okay. get away with he that grew too. up in Newcastle. But yeah. um, <laughs> however, though, he has, uh, in his solo career, I think has really returned to um, his roots a lot. Yeah. The, you'll hear a lot of Celtic kind of stuff. And if yeah. you've seen his band, lately, which is 10 pieces. Okay. He's got whistles. I need to check that out. I haven't listened. Oh, he's oh, wow. amazing. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I listened to some of his solo stuff, but that was probably 10 years ago, so yeah. I'll have to re reconnect yeah. on that. But he has fiddle sure. players and, and, okay. uh, whistle, and players whistle players and, wow. and everything. It's, yeah. it's very Celtic. Wow. So. Okay, and cool. then we do some stuff, too, Clint, that, that isn't Celtic sounding at all. Uh, sure, and okay. And like we have this uh, favorite joke we always say here's one of our favorite Celtic tunes from Africa uh, it's a Paul Simon tune off of Graceland you know so but uh, as Jonathan was saying you know I think sometimes we just try to f uh, see if we if the music fits our, 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 right. our, our style, voices yeah, our yeah. style and, and we play together uh, uh, enough that we can get a feel for something and then we, if we will run it for a while and if we like it we keep it awesome yeah, just an inter interesting sidebar. Um, there's a lot of discussion right now in the Celtic music world of what is Celtic music. Okay, and some sure. people think it's only the old traditional songs. Right, right. And yet there's a lot of modern artists out there doing music from Ireland and Scotland and Wales and all. I mean, and that has a, a more modern sound but is still really based in that Celtic tradition. Sure. And so uh, it's it's a really broad field what you consider Celtic music. Yeah. You know? yep. Celtic Excellent. Celtic is is kind of a generic term but you know the yep. Celts really started in in the in the Middle East yeah. and then they you know migrated. over history migrated to other places and yeah. mm -hmm. uh, before they ever ended up in the British Isles. Yeah. And um, and then you know uh, bluegrass and Americana music is such right a there, such yep. a direct connection to that. So it's as with most music, you can't really put a specific tag on it because it's a blend and mix sure. of things. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So where do you guys find inspiration for the music that you create? Your originals, your your covers. Where do you find that inspiration? Well, one of, one of my favorite songs that I wrote and we do in the band is called uh, Orkney Saturday Night. And in uh, 2016, I believe it was, we had the chance to go to the Orkney Folk Festival okay. and spent uh, four, four nights there listening to music from literally all over the world. Wow. Uh, okay. all, all kinds of artists from all over the world, uh, from South Africa, from Australia, from England, from Ireland, from Scotland, of course. And um, it was just such an inspiration. I came back and I was like, I've, I've got to write about this experience and so I mean it, what I wrote was sort of a, a synopsis of the whole thing but it was about being there on a particular night and experiencing the music and experiencing the whole vibe around it and then Amazing. Yeah. heck yeah yeah Karen? well for me um, the songs that I write are kind of like a, a way to process my life you know sure, they sure. just kind of come out of my life and uh, I've been making up songs since I was a little kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it's just kind of like in my head, a running commentary about my life. You know? awesome. <laughs> so, awesome. Heck yeah. yeah. So, yeah. That's yeah. amazing. What about you, Bobby? Um, well, uh, I listen to a lot of music. And yeah. um, an example, we're going to play the song here in a, in a second that uh, uh, yeah, I've never, it's Crowded House, right? Yeah. yeah. I've never heard them or heard their band or knew about them, mm -hmm. but I just heard, the, you know, on Spotify, I just heard this song, and I'm like, 
we could that could fit that would be something you know so sometimes i just hear something that sounds like we could do well yeah yeah, yeah. and you've come jonathan you've come from a long you played in rock bands you've done a lot of things yeah i mean my you know i my true love is classic rock and folk, sure. folk rock um but you know i'm like these i i have been truly blessed i think to be invited to this band because i've been exposed to all of the music that mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. tom and karen um have brought in and i found to really love it and it's helped my bass playing to grow because how, yeah how has that changed your bass playing? well because you know when i first started playing bass and i came to this late in life as i said i was uh playing classic rock songs and sure. everything and i was trying to copy uh the sounds yep, because they're yep. classic sounds and you want to have the bass part be you know similar there's no bass on most of the songs. Yeah. Okay. So, so it's given me that opportunity to, like, I think... Find most, your own voice, yeah, really. Yeah, find my own voice, to create my own bass parts, and so on. That doesn't mean that sometimes I don't hear a bass part that I go, I want to play this song because sure. I love this bass part. Yeah. Uh, an example of a song I, I brought uh, to the band, and they were uh, graceful enough to accept, was um, I, I love Chris Stapleton. Oh, yeah. And yep. um, there's a beautiful song he does called Starting Over. Mm -hmm. And the yep. bass on that song is just really dominant and really beautiful. And mm -hmm. then I could picture, I said, I really want to play that. And I could picture Karen singing the, the lead on that. Okay. And these guys listened to it and said, yeah, yeah, yeah we can do that. Heck yeah. Let's do it. And, and now awesome. it's become, you know, and it's a great thing, you know, to play. We, we have a lot of country uh, fans, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. people that are country fans in the audiences, and you, you know, we say, "Hey, any Chris Stapleton fans out there?" And people like perk up. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. And they sing along. So, you know, and that's yeah. a song we don't Celticize it in any way. You know, we Just pretty much run it as run is. Run it as is. Cool. You know, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, you guys sound really, really good. I love this, man. Okay. This sounds yeah, awesome. How about let's hear a couple more tunes? What do you say? Yeah. Okay, this is a song called um, Two Rivers Waltz, and it's, uh, it's a song where Bobby and I get to um, kind of alternate and then play flutes together, and it's a, a real beautiful tune. has a real Celtic sound.
So crowded house, that is cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Awesome. Who so that was your idea, it Bobby? Is. Yeah. Yeah. As I said, I've just had a Spotify mix going on and all of a sudden it came across and I went, Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I had so. a cool groove. Yeah. Had a real cool groove. Yeah, nice, it did. Nicely done. Nicely done. So let's talk about you guys individually. Let me put you on the spot. Here we go. Okay. No. Okay. So Tom, tell me uh, I was reading your guys' bio, so this is okay. where I got a lot of this stuff. And all by right. the way, your daughter Told me your daughter did the the your uh, web page, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah she Emily, did a yeah. fabulous job. Oh, thanks. Looks yeah, good, good I'll, bio. I'll let her know. You, yeah, you yeah. said that. Yeah, well, for sure. well written too. So, yeah. but so tell me about your rekindled love uh, for performing Celtic music, and uh, the research you did to to get into this art form. Well, uh, like I said, uh, you know, it was sort of was a thing that uh, doing my heritage and sort of going to Celtic festivals and hearing these bands perform live and then, you know, of course, booking them up and, and trying to get recordings from them. And uh, I, I found it fascinating, an incredible range of music from, uh, you know, one person doing folk type songs to uh, groups doing uh, Celtic jazz style, yeah, sure. it, you know, some of them right. in, singing in Gaelic uh, or Gaelic and, um, it was just it was just this whole fascinating uh, uh, genre that I was going wow and all these incredible artists out there that I really hadn't paid attention to before and mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. yeah Doogie McLean um, oh gosh uh, yeah uh, as I said uh, yeah Cal sings a song Caledonia that's sort of become a theme song for Scotland. I mean, it's, right, it's okay. It's if you start singing in a pub, everybody in the pub knows it. You're right. I mean, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. And so, kind of like Sweet Caroline. I yeah, guess. yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it like is. And, and he sort of makes a joke about it. He says, he says, I can't get off the stage unless I sing this song. They won't let me go. You <laughs> <Okay>. know. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And uh, again, just um, going, hmm. You know, uh, trying to capture that feeling because i you know again i i can't i cannot play he's an incredible uh, finger styled guitarist sure, sure and yeah. uh, plays in open tunings and i'm going okay what can i do to s make this feeling of this song come through okay. and so yeah. trying yeah. trying to do that with the song and um instead of trying to emulate the artist doing it exactly just trying right. to get the feel 
but um, I found a lot of the feeling um, rang true with me, and I discovered the the Scottish rock group uh, Runeric, and I'll, they there's very modern sound, uh, rock and roll through and through, but a strong ga uh, Gaelic influence in a lot of their songs. Mm -hmm. They they all grew up speaking Gaelic on the Outer Isles of Scotland. Okay. And so they, they can, you know, sing it the way it should be sung. And it has a, a feeling, and it, it, they developed a following throughout Scotland and, and out throughout Europe. They never really caught on in the U.S. that much. Okay. okay. But, uh, boy, I any place in Europe or, you know, you, you go into stores in Scotland and they're playing Rune Riggs music. Okay. Right. Sure, like, sure. We, like we would hear, you know, the, the Rolling Stones or Crosby, Stills, and Nash right, here. Right, right. Right. And they, they managed to do a career of over 45 years. Wow. Uh, started in the late 70s and mm -hmm. ended in 2018. So Nice. Yeah. So nice. Awesome. Yeah. And Karen, you have a jazz-flavored folk influence in your style uh, with the ability to sing the heart. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what that means and how you've used this gift. I will, but let me just tag on to what he said. Sure. You were talking about research. Yeah. We've been to, uh, we went to a uh, uh, Scottish, fe well, it was a festival called Celtic Connections in Glasgow, okay. and we took Gaelic singing Sing lessons. classes, what? and we yeah. learned to sing in Gaelic, mm -hmm. and uh, and then we had we we did a lot of folk, uh, well, Scottish festivals, and there was always somebody from the Scottish Gaelic Society there. So if there was a song we wanted to learn that had Gaelic in it, we'd go to them and say. Can you help us pronounce this? Right, <laughs> you right. Because you try and try and read it and off the page, and it's nothing sure, like what yeah, it's supposed to sound yeah. like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But back to your question. Um, yeah. What I, I think I mentioned to you that I've been singing all my life, mm -hmm. ever since I was a little kid. As a matter of fact, some of my friends, as a little kid, would say, "You are always singing. Would you stop singing?" <laughs> you know. And uh, luckily, she didn't. And so, yes, exactly. what happened was, as I grew up and started getting more into the school of life, I just found myself attracted to communities of people where there's some really good musicians. And mm -hmm. I had the good fortune of, of being around them, being inspired by them, learning from them, things like that. And, uh, and you know, uh, then, that just kind of went on for all through my 20s. And, uh, and then I, I met a man who was my musical partner for a number of years, and we started a group called Rosewood. Okay. And we called that Acoustic Songcraft, and it was all almost all original songs, wow, either okay. his or mine. And so I think his original songs kind of inspired me to want to keep writing songs. But, yep. but the whole thing was kind of, it, it, and this was the era too, you write about what you know, you know, okay. you write yeah. about yeah. your life, you write about things like that. And um, so that's kind of where that was. And, and I started teaching, even though I wasn't like a classically trained teacher, I started teaching people, kids, adults, you know, how to um, play recorders, play beginning guitar, or access their voice. Okay. You awesome. know, and I did take vocal lessons, but it was like I just kind of trans translated that all into what I could give to other people. I did that for 35 years. Amazing. So, yeah. 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 That's amazing. Awesome. And then, Jonathan, tell me about your musical influence and your experience as a vocalist and bassist. <laughs> um, you know, I was... Uh, I sang in choirs from ninth grade for years and years, almost any in, in high school and college. And, um, and then most communities that I lived in, I lived in Putney, Vermont, I found a mm -hmm. choir there. Um, when I lived in Grand Junction, I found a choir there. When I first moved to the Valley here, I sang with the you know, Aspen uh, Choral Society that you know, kind of collects voices from all over the Valley. I do awesome. the Messiah every year. Um, since joining, since being in bands myself, I haven't had time for that anymore, sure. but that was my first major love of music. Um, in high school, like everybody else, I wanted, you know, I wanted to learn to play the guitar so I could meet girls. Right. <laughs> right. You know, so, um, and the kind of stuff I loved is, you know, folky rock, James Taylor, James, yeah. uh, you know, James Taylor, Jackson Brown, Neil Young, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young. Right. Um, that kind of folky music, and um, 
And I continue to play, you know, I, I continue to play guitar for a while until I just realized I wasn't going to get any better. <laughs> I wasn't that good and I didn't, it wasn't going to get much better. But um, um, I always, because I sang bass, um, okay. I was going to ask what part. I was going to guess baritone bass. I, I almost always would hear bass parts in um, the music I was listening to. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard of Lee Sklar. Oh, yeah. Example. Oh, yeah. Lee yep. Just, yep. just yep. an amazing melodic bass player who played yep. with James Taylor, Jackson yeah. Brown, yes. Daryl yeah. King. All over, yeah. yeah. All over those places. Iconic. And I was yeah. hearing those bass parts. So, you know, I kept saying, someday, someday, someday I'm going to learn to play the bass. Um, so. My best friend, who I used to play guitar with in college, moved to Glenwood, and uh, we started playing guitar together again. And said, "You know what? I'm just I'm gonna I'm gonna finally do this. I'm gonna pick up the uh, pick up a bass and, Heck yeah. and learn to try to learn to play." And so when we'd get together to play music, I'd plunk along on on the bass, and and then that uh, relationship eventually uh, led into the duo, the Logan Brothers, and then mm -hmm. we became a, a trio, um, you know, power trio, bass, uh, drums, guitar. Okay. And uh, we had the Logan Brothers for about six years in the Valley, and we were doing those folky, folky rock, classic rock sure. kind of songs. And, and then uh, when that band ended, um, Tom, who I've, I, I've had the, Dubious pleasure. Dubious pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I knew uh, what he was looking for. <laughs> I, met, I met Tom within a day or two that I moved into the Valley in, okay. in the late 80s. We worked together at CMC. Then, then um, I became his supervisor, as if he could be supervised. <laughs> and Thankless then task. <laughs> we, weren't, uh, we were just, we worked together and supported each other in, in um, Tom's program, which, uh, so we worked together for a long time. And then he left and became a valet at, um, at the hospital. And when I retired, I became a valet. So I, uh, we were constantly following each other around. Okay, gotcha, yeah. yeah. And uh, after the Logan brothers um, broke up, Tom kind of said, hey, you know, Karen and I are always hearing the bass parts in these songs uh, if you wanted to try and play along with us. So uh, I think well, he gave me like five or six songs. Yeah. and We'd go over and hang out at his house yeah. and the, the, the acoustic guitar yeah. and the bass. And, 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 and fiddle around and, and uh, yeah. brought that sound to, uh, to Orrin Moore. Yeah. That's awesome. That is awesome. Now, Bobby, I want to I hear about you hiking through the Rockies <laughs> with your flute. With your <laughs> <laughs> no, you, I mean, you've been, that's kind of how, you, you started that in your 20s, right? Yeah, well, you know, I had a similar experience to a lot of, kids growing up I started playing the trombone when I was in fourth grade and mm -hmm. I switched to the trumpet because I was tired of lugging the trombone around <laughs> the trumpet was smaller and I played that I don't know probably up until I was a sophomore in high school or something and then sure. uh, we didn't have a very good band teacher which um, I mean uh, I need to say uh, we need to support good music programs Absolutely. in the schools Amen. because 100%. they're getting cut left and right and um, I, I'm not putting this all on the shoulders of my bad band teacher, but he was just... But it's important. Yeah, yes, it absolutely. is important because if you can inspire kids when they're that age and just let them do what they want to do, they hear the music. They just need yep. to figure out a way to play it. Anyway. Shout um, out Jay Duplo. So, you know, as a sophomore in high school, I was like, ah, that's fine. I don't need to do band. I can do other things. And, um, but uh, I got a chance to move to Colorado in my late teens and... Um, I uh, got into mountain climbing and I started mm -hmm. working for Outward Bound and took these expeditions and one of them was to Nepal and really? I wow. was in Kathmandu one day and I was walking down the street and there was this guy selling bamboo flutes and uh, it sounded like a cool sound, you know, it's like, yeah, I want one of those, how much are they? Of course I had to barter, you know, was, sure, sure. you know, that's the, the way you do things there, but um but so I had this bamboo flute, and then when I came back and I was working these outward bound courses, I'd spend a whole month out in the, out in the mountains, and it was small and light and easy to carry around, and yeah. you know, I could play it while I was walking, and so I don't know, that's how I sort of got into the that's flute, so but cool. I had an outward bound student who was kind of interested in my flute playing and said, I bet you'd like to play a real flute, and it's like, a real flute? And he goes, well, I have this flute I used to play, I don't play it anymore, I'll give it to you. And it's like, yeah, okay, fine. But then weeks later when I was home, suddenly in the mail arrived this flute. 
like that. And uh, wow. uh, so I thought, okay, I'll give this a try. So I started playing the flute, and then uh, a couple years later, I had a friend who said, I have this old saxophone uh, I don't use anymore. You want <laughs> that? I was cool, like, man. I'll try that, you know? So it would just kind of came to be these instruments in my life, sort of. He, he came to me. Hey, and Bobby, I've got this uh, set of bagpipes I'd like to get. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll draw the line there. <laughs> anyway. But that's so cool that how you, how you kind of picked these up later. I mean, I would have assumed that you would have been playing flute or saxophone in band, but that's not the case. You picked that up mm -hmm. as a young adult. Yeah, and they're, and they're different, but, you know, nice thing about woodwinds is uh, they have very similar fingers. Sure, and yep, yep. Embouchures are very different. I mean, there's a, I'm still learning how to play these instruments, is what right. I'm saying. But, you know, then, then I was living in Paonia, then fast forward, and, um, uh, you know, did things like play with Garen and Rosewood, and, and, and uh, you know, um, I've always love music, listen to music. I guess I've been uh, lean, leaning towards jazz a lot. Okay, yeah. And and what I like about jazz in particular is is uh, improvising. I like mm -hmm. I like improvising, and uh, th there's so many forms of music that lend themselves to that, just picking it up and playing with other people, and you can hear what key it's in, you can sort of mess around. Um, but I had the opportunity then to start studying music. I went to Greeley and the UNC okay. and Heck actually yeah. studied. And after that, I ended up being the music teacher at the Colorado Rocky Mountain School in Carbondale. Wow. So I okay. did that for like 12 years. And uh, in that time that I was in Carbondale, I was also playing with the Sirens of Swing, which is a famous local band. If you don't, <laughs> you've not heard of it. I don't know. We don't Where have you? No YouTube videos. Sorry, don't exist. Yeah. But. Uh, um, did that for, for a long time. And then, um, uh, sidebar totally, but I got into coaching, uh, kayaking and okay. spent a lot of time traveling internationally. And I actually put all the instruments down for like 15 years, didn't okay. play wow. at all yep. for 15 years. So wow. got back into it, uh, recently and, and knowing these guys and the opportunity to play with them came up and. That's how we ended up here. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I quit like a couple times in life, maybe for just a couple years or something like that. And it's uh, it's kind of a reset. It's nice. It's actually a good thing, I think. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. You, know, you guys sound great. Thank you so much for coming out Thank here, man. You. Thank you awesome. for having us. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd like to say, just while we have the opportunity, thank you, Clint, and also Jeremy behind the camera. Yeah, yeah. You guys are just doing an amazing thing with this podcast and Thanks, it's Bob. really yeah. interesting to Thank you. hear everybody's stories and listen yeah. to the music yeah. and yeah. you in particular Clint I think have become the new ambassador of music for the upper <laughs> and lower valleys yeah. in our yeah. region. Thanks guys yeah. I appreciate that. Who would know that the center of music would be Silk, Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> in a garage. In a garage. In a garage. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But what but, a garage. Yeah. <laughs> You guys got uh, got a couple more tunes in you? We sure. do. Excellent, excellent. The next song we're going to do, uh, if you've ever seen the movie uh, Waking Ned Divine, this is sort of a featured song in that. It's by a group of Scottish and Irish musicians called the Water Boys.
like a cannon in the rain with the beating of the sleepers and the burning of the coal counting towns passing by on a night that's full of soul with light in my head and you in my Fabulous, guys. That sounded amazing. Oh, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Awesome. Well, so tell me, where can, where can people find your music? If they come to our shows, they'll get the <laughs> premium <laughs> of it. Uh, yeah. I'd jump right in on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, we also have a few of our tunes on our um, website. website, Okay. which is Orinmore Music. It's all one word, all okay. lowercase, orinmoremusic.com. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so what gigs do you guys have coming up? Where, where are you guys playing next? Uh, tomorrow we're playing at Heather's Savory Pies and Tapas in okay. well, Basal. That's Sunday. Or right? yeah. yeah. No, yeah yesterday we played at Heather's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, tomorrow is Sunday. Yeah, uh, but this is not going to be. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> never <laughs> mind. So t where do you guys usually play at? Tell me about that. Gosh, well. We do play at Heather's a lot yeah. in Basalt. Yep. Uh, we, we're playing a lot of the farmers markets around here, the okay. Newcastle, uh, Palisade, Palisade, yeah, uh, Basalt farmers markets. Nice. We're playing Glenwood under the bridge. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. And Excellent. Uh, yeah, we we played a few gigs at. We uh, do some restaurants yeah. in town, and, yeah. and, and the summer's busy with mo mostly the yeah. outdoor yeah. stuff, yeah. as you I know. Yeah. Palisade Brewing, we have one coming up there. Clean yeah. up on the Snowmass Mall later yeah. in the summer. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. Trail Life Brewery. Trail Life Brand Brewery. Oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. I've, I've I've seen other yeah. people play there. It's great. Yeah. 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 So so you got I mean you're doing you're. You're doing a great job updating your website, or all those you can, people can go to your website and find out when you play. Plus, you yes. guys post on Facebook as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 and all those music. connections you can find on the website. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Right. Excellent. So, what other summer plans do you guys have? Oh well, let's see. Uh, we're uh, going to see our son Brendan is okay. directing his first professional production over in really? Bailey next weekend. So okay. Karen and I are going to pop over and catch that. Okay. And, uh, and then later in the summer, we're going to take a trip to Kansas to see my grandkids there. Nice, yeah. nice. And then in uh, September, we're headed to Canada for right. a week. Right. Really? To my son-in-law's cabin. Okay. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. You got any kayaking trips? Yeah, I'm going to go to Idaho next week and for a week to go kayaking with some really? friends up there, too. You know, the I got salmon? Is that what you... Uh, the payette. 
Okay. Yeah, the PAD system, yeah. yeah. And then we got a Grand Canyon trip coming up at the end of the summer, so. Heck yeah. Yeah. We'll come back safe. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Jonathan, what you got going on? Yeah, you know, my wife and I have just done most of our major travels for the summer. We cool. went to Cozumel for a dive trip in nice. May. I was away last week, and I've got some family coming in during the summer, and we'll do lots of uh, biking and hiking. Awesome. Yeah, but most of my travel's done for the summer. Cool, cool. Yeah. Amazing. Well, it's been a real pleasure to have you guys well, here. So been thank you so much well, for coming. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's hear one more to close this out. Okay. This last song is a song uh, by a group, originally by a group called Delta Ray, but we uh, kind of adopted a Celtic band called uh, Runa. Runa's version of the song. It's called Dance in the Graveyard. in peace I want to dance in joy I want to dance in the graveyard the graveyard and while I'm alive I don't want to be alone mourning the ones who came before I want to dance with them some more let's dance in the graveyard Let's
dance in the graveyard.